Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I actually want to respond to a question about how we survive the bear market, what's the future optimism for Splinterlands. These are topics that you will, if, if you've followed me for a while, hear, hear, have heard me speak about many times. It's almost like core to where what I provide within this channel. One, a vision for the future, and two, a justification for why we can walk in confidence with what Splinterlands is. That's in short what I want to speak about today. So if you're you know, you've been here for a while, you're going to have heard this already, but for newer people, I hope you'll stick around and listen to this one because it's going to be my best effort at explaining why I walk in confidence in Splinter Lines, why I have $50,000, $60,000 worth of resources, US dollars value worth of items in this game, in a video game. Um, and so we'll talk about the optimism for the future. We'll talk about preparing in the bear market. We'll talk about the opportunity in front of us right now. But before we do any of that, I got to say shout out to splintercoach.com. Splintercoach.com is a website that will track your personalized battle history. And it's a website that is both fun and valuable. For five bucks a month, you're going to receive the opportunity to just explore which monsters are you playing the most? How are you winning in which conditions under which rule sets of mana caps? And how are you losing when you lose? All that information can be fun to look at, but also powerful and help you win more often, which can then receive more rewards for your time and attention. So check out splintercoach.com for five bucks a month. You can get some really fun and powerful utility out of their website yeah so i see a comment i'm going through the comment section and i see gopal gopal dropped a oh a comment on a recent faq video where i talked about a number of things this was one of the videos where i just get into a wide range of comments but today we're just going to tackle this one from gopal and we're going to go i'm going to try and articulate as if you've never heard it before why i feel Splinter Lines is special and why I think the bear market's an opportunity, not a not a concern. So he goes, how are you seeing the future of Splinter Lands if the bear market continues and what preparations can be done for the bull market? There's, It's such a simple sentence. It's one sentence, but there's really so much that can be covered here. Even this idea of the future of Splinter Lands, is the future impaired or do I have reason to be concerned about the future of Splinter Lands in the context of a bear market like is the bear market going to persist and persist and never end for spun lines is there ever going to be another bull market um and when we talk about if it continues well if it's going to continue for some amount of time is it going to be days months you know years i don't really know you know as we look at some of the recent yesterday i saw last night bitcoin pumped like look at this 11 percent today 20 just skirting 30 thou i haven't seen if it touched if it went over 30 in the last Let's see. 24 hours. No, it looks like we're at the high right now. We're just 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 below 30,000. So who knows what's happening? I mean, right? Like your guess is as good as mine. I am bullish on cryptocurrency. That's the starting place for this conversation. I believe cryptocurrency represents a revolution within finance and the trustless systems that blockchain enables, meaning you know, we don't need to know each other and yet we can transact in a trustless manner. You can send me resources, I can receive it. There's even smart contracts that can conclude a contract, right? I can list an NFT for sale. You can com you can buy it with cryptocurrency and it is trustlessly finished. You'll receive your asset, I receive mine. There's no mm, funny business that can happen in the middle. There's no theft or, or, or you know, craziness that can happen when you, for instance, you introduce fiat currency, it's there's lots of ways to, to scam systems when you're using fiat currency because it doesn't, you don't send the resource through a blockchain trustless system that's decentralized and governed through this decentralized mechanism that just says, okay, John Doe sent his money. Now it's no longer John Doe's, it's in transition. Now it's over at Jane Doe, Jane Doe now owns it. That's how blockchain you know, a race is a wide range of problems with a traditional finance system. And so I think cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. I think things like Bitcoin and some of the major coins that we've seen for, you know, years and years coming on a decade now, there's a lot of these that are going to have a significant place in the future of cryptocurrency, or, sorry, in the future uh, place of future finance. And as a result, I think there's going to be a growing appetite for blockchain based impact and implications on some of our favorite things in the world. And I think that could apply to, 
you know, shipping, uh, global shipping for different resources, different, whether it's food or, you know, merchandise, um, I think it could absolutely have an impact on, you know, medical, uh, especially medical shipping, like anything where there's documentation required to track one thing being moved globally. I think there's so many implications for blockchain and, and video games, surprisingly, is wrapped into that conversation because again, there's an ownership of assets, which is revolutionary. The NFTs that you hold within a game, you earn for playing for your time and attention in a game. That's new to from coming out of blockchain in a major way. The true ownership. Yeah, in old days gone by, you could win, you know, you could get skins on your Apex Legends account or your, you could get loot in your Diablo 1 or 2 or 3 uh, account. But there's not an easy way to transfer that ownership and receive value for that asset. There, ha there have been ways over the years where that was done, but there's not an easy way integrated within the system, but then blockchain answers that. And so again, anytime there's a, there's a value or a, an asset that's owned, blockchain creates this intrinsic path to transferability in a reliable trustless manner so i think it's going to revolutionize finance it's going to revolutionize you know everything from accounting to uh, trading to you know asset and global management and then yes even within video games and so so that's the the foundation of where i come at when i think you know is splinterlands something special and, and, and the answer is, of course, yes, it's, it's offering this ownership for time and attention, the, these NFTs and these cryptocurrency tokens that you receive for your effort while playing that are yours for good. And that's something that's different than we see with other games. It's something that's different than we see, you know, it's literally a total new look at how video games can operate and how they, how they can be, how they can be valuable to the player. It's no longer just about play and joy. Uh, it's it's now for the first time also about this opportunity that comes out of it. And so when we talk about the future of Splinterlands, does you know how do I feel about the future of Splinterlands? Well, it comes. It starts out of a conversation, out of that conversation, meaning it starts out of a place of is the foundation exciting? Is there reason to be excited or or um, optimistic. I think for all those reasons, there's a true revolution happening within blockchain broadly. And I, I, I invite Bitcoin into that conversation. I invite a, a lot of other major coins into that conversation. They're changing the world. And then NFT ownership and blockchain, what, how blockchain allows, you know, ownership of assets in a game is part of that conversation. And then Splinterlands comes to the mind as it is executing that today. And so when we when we ask the question of like what if the bear market continues you know will, like essentially is there a future for splinterlands the first part is that yes because of all that foundation there's there's great ground for this thing to grow and be something even bigger than it already is in fact it's still so small the growth that we've seen in this game has just been so trivial that the future is really really potentially super optimistic but in, in this conversation also, when we talk about the future, it, there's, there's, a, there's a question mark that I can't speak to, which is how long will this bear market persist? It's encouraging to see that these price points, you know, Bitcoin up 10% today, it's encouraging, but that doesn't mean that we're suddenly in a bull market. I mean, it might, and it might not. I think it actually doesn't. I think my thinking has been for a long time that this is actually just the the... This is the perhaps the beginning of the next, but that doesn't mean in the next, I would think in the next weeks, I, I'm thinking months. I don't know how many months I really, I can't, I can't give you any justification. These are, you know, I'm, I, I look to other people's wisdom on chart analysis and, you know, TA, um, but I'm confident a bull market is coming. And man, you know what? I got, I, I can't go too far down this road, but I have to say there's so many financial implications and considerations that have to be touched when you want to explore when will the bear market for crypto end there's things like you know you know the federal reserve and their quantitative easing their, their interest rate management across all the, the the central banks throughout the world these have implications on the ease or difficulty of access to money 
and then corporate debt will grow or um, possibly shrink, but more likely stay stagnant when interest rates are high. And that means because money is less, less, less easy to acquire, it means that there'll be less stock buybacks, which means less, you know, high investment within the equities markets, Dow Jones, etc. And, and that also has an impact directly on this space. There's, there's actually a lot of similarity between traditional equities and, and blockchain at this moment, because there's still a lot of the same voices that are, that are playing in those, in, in each of those, those waters. And so my point is who knows what's going to happen. I actually have some thoughts and some theories, but they're just that they're theories. And so coming back to the question, do we, do we know, I mean, do we know how long this is going to, the bear market is going to continue? No. Um, so then we have we have a we have a picture of a strong foundation. We have reason to be confident in what this could be. We have reason to you know articulate justify how this is truly a revolution. How Splinterlands and and blockchain is truly a revolution. How unique asset ownership is actually interesting, desirable, um, and it's and I think it's going to play. It logically should play a, a critical role in video game development in the future, and then players will flock to it as they recognize that it, there is value in there. But I think that comes, that's like, that's the justification. But then the question mark is how long will the bear market last? Because it's not going to be flu floods of new players will not come until there's a bull market cycle. And only in those massive gains will they begin to ask questions like, Hey, how do I get involved? That'll be the wrong time to have get involved, but that's when they'll get involved. And then I think we can move into kind of the tail of your conversation here, which is what preparations can be done for the bull market. And this is the interesting um, connection point, because if I'm right about that foundation being strong, then and and if I'm right about there being an end to the bear market, eventually, those are two hypotheses or theories that you might you might challenge and disagree with. You might say the foundation is bad for Splinterlands or uh, that the bear market will never end because this is a different thing. We're going to some sort of maybe Great Depression or something. You feel cryptocurrency is literally dead. Lots of people have said that before. They've been wrong every time. I don't believe that. I think this is a great foundation. I think there will be an end to the bear market. A bull market will come and Splinterlands and other games and other tokens will have massive, massive gains. So if you agree with me with those two you know, suggestions, then it goes to a place of what preparations can be done. And the exciting thing about that is, you know, in the middle of this bear market, all you truly have to do is just enjoy this game. When you come along and you press play, you're earning SPS per battle. You're, you can get, you're getting um, soul bound reward cards that are yours to keep and yours to use, which are gonna do what? One, increase the fun that you have the opportunity to play within the game. Two, they're going to produce more wins because it's an extra utility, extra usefulness, more power for you to play with. And that is going to produce what? More SPS because you win more often. But then also there's opportunities in that to then participate in other mechanisms that can grow what you're doing too. Think about events such as tournaments. Think about hmm, um, other game participation like Splinter Forge. And suddenly there's this diversification of opportunity available to you with the same set of resources which is constantly growing because you're playing the game so the play of participating in the game creates more of the resources and each of those resources produces more resources because it allows more and more victory so it's like this it's this multiplication it's this snowball effect and i've said this for so long one of the best things about this game one of the most exciting things about this game is absolutely the fact that that Splinterlands is rewarding you for your time and attention and that those assets and resources carry a value which they carry a value which is yours to keep sell use however you see fit and that important that's that revolution we talked about if that's so then it should be exciting that those assets and resources are are generating revenue through their ownership. Why is that exciting? Because one, you actually are generating revenue, but two, it's it, each of those new additions to your portfolio, each of those new cards and tokens, etc., is is 
is increasing and increasing and increasing the daily pie that you're receiving. Again, whether it's SPS per battle, that was this win right here was 8.6 SPS. And as I get more SPS, I get more SPS through staking mechanisms as well as through you know each win each win because of how they're going to introduce the stake requirements on your on your account. So it's it really is a situation where the more cards you have, the more cards you get, then the more cards you have, then the more cards you get, then the more cards you, like it's that cycle. And it's the more SPS you have, the more SPS you get, and the more SPS you have, the more SPS, right? It just goes on and on and on in that positive, in that positive cycle. And that's what I'm saying. And then, and then again, okay, so that's, that's me saying, if you invest your time and attention, you will get more and more and more resources. But then I want to finish by saying, I actually believe those resources will appreciate. So it's not just that you'll have more of these, you know, infinitely created, infinitely cheap and re and dropping in price tokens or NFTs. I actually believe they'll grow in price. And I know for a fact that a lot of people don't believe that. I hear people say things like, you know, there's too many cards. There, there's always new ones. The new decks reflect inflation and, and that the new decks and new expansions and, and releases mean that you never have a need to own the old cards. And this is both true and false. And this is where we kind of have to land because I think this argument justifies our, my belief. I, I want to justify my belief that these assets will go up. And I think the, the core concern is that there's just so many cards. The thing about the this issue is that, yes, there are new additions being released all the time. Let's go over to buy. You got the alphas first, and then you got the betas. Later, you got the promos, you got rewards. Each of these is new cards upon new cards. Untamed had 1.5 million packs. Dice had, I think, 500,000 packs, if I recall correctly. KS Legion, 15 million packs. Uh, the uh, the Rift Watchers, 3 million, but they haven't all sold, and I don't think they ultimately will all sell. Even though there is a proposal now selling them for DC, I don't think they will all sell. Rewards, originally were just a few cards, and then it was like these massively printed, you know, Venari Heatsmith and Deceivers and Conjurers. And so people say, no, there's just too many, and there will always be too many. This is wrong for two reasons. One, each card each card has the opportunity to be burnt burnt through consolidation you, you know at one at level one all you have is one bcx of this card at level 10 all you have is 400. now i know there's 7.8 million conjurers that's way too many you say but when you divide by 400 you get a far smaller number when you divide by 100 even you get a far smaller number and and then the question is are we going to have a growth in player base or not if we stay stagnant at this player base and never see another sort of significant growth in the in the in the in the demand of for the cards, meaning the growth in player base, then sure, these are probably far too many. But but every economic conversation requires two inputs. One, the supply of the resource that you're you're asking about its value and its price point, and then the demand. So supply and demand. And with the conjurer right now, there's too much supply. With the deceiver, the same thing. Heatsmith, the same thing. All these reward cards, maybe KS Legion, you might say the same thing. Rift Watchers, maybe even. There's too much supply. But then the question is how much demand is there? Well, right now there's probably, you know, the information's here actually. The daily active, daily average um, active accounts is 65,000 last month, 53,000 yesterday. This has been really stagnant. Like really, I say stagnant, but I mean, a stable is another word. I feel as though the, the probably, those who are going to leave have left and they left probably two months ago with the first conversations around around bots being kicked out of modern and i and we saw a dramatic drop off in the active accounts and it went down to roughly fifty thousand. and obviously it stayed pretty stagnant there pretty stationary which is to me an indication that this is the new normal and if that's so you say okay well how many humans is that well probably ten thousand fifteen thousand i three i, I know three thousand people roughly participated in the great burning and so then maybe that gives us some evidence that there's perhaps 3,000 accounts that are run by individual humans. I think that's not accurate because there's there's probably not everybody participates in the Great Burning. I think there's probably six to 10,000 actual humans playing the game. And that's a guess. I can't prove it. But I'm saying that's a huge growth from where it used to be with hundreds when I first started playing this game four years ago or whatever. And so 
again, do, do we have reason to believe that there'll be growth in the player base? I think so. And if the player base grows, then do we have reason to believe that the assets will appreciate? Yes. So the question is, do you believe, do you have, do you think first that there's, there's justification that this is firm foundation, that this is valuable, the, the sort of NFT ownership and the cryptocurrency revolution is important. If yes, I think move on to the next stage. And, and then it's, and, and, and as I've always said, do you think the game's fun too? That's an, such an important question. If you enjoy it, just play it for its own sake and let those resources pile up. But then lastly, from an opportunity standpoint, as the question alludes to, like what preparations can be done for the in for the next bull market, it's like that opportunity standpoint is do you conclude finally that again, it's there's something revolutionary here, it's fun and entertaining, you're happy to enjoy those rewards, but then lastly, that there will be some sort of bull market that will come. I think you have to wrestle with this topic that I've, that I've that that I'm wrestling with, which is will the player base grow? Because we know that the supply of cards will keep growing. We know that there'll be more and more additions of cards that will come in. And we're we're talking rebellion. We're talking mini sets. We're talking you know more and more and more cards. So they're kind. Of, when they say there's too many cards, they're kind of right. When they say there's inflation in the card supply, they're kind of right. But they're wrong too because each of these cards is unique and each of these cards are being reduced and if the player base grows there will be an answer to that problem plus things like land are going to diminish the card supply in a significant way i don't know if if it's going to be as massive as we hope right away when 1.5 launches but these there's there's ways to resolve supply that are already unfolding and then player base growth is in my mind a, a given it will come do you agree or not because if you do you, then the answer to the question, you know, how are you seeing the future of the splinter lands if the bear market continues? I'm seeing the future as being optimistic. I'm seeing the bear market as, yes, it will continue, but it will end. Uh, continue meaning there will be a period of time where we will still walk through a bear market, but it will end. And then what preparations can be done for the bull market? play the game invest your time and attention to maximize the number of rewards you're earning because like i said as you're in sps you stake it you get more sps as you're in cards you have new utility you win more often you earn more chests which produce more cards you get more merits in those chests those chests produce gladiators those gladiators come into your rank battle experience play the game more invest more time and attention in the events earn SPS through those processes and, and so on. Play games like Splinter Forge where you can use the same assets to produce Forgium, which then can be sold for DC if you want, which can pay for rentals, which can grow your deck and experience in more, you know, chests and victories and rewards. And then again, be folded over into Splinter Forge. See, it's like this, that's why it's a snowball. And, and then again, final thought, they will appreciate because there will be another bull market. And right now, when you see me win eight SPS or six SPS on a single battle, and you think, oh, wow, who cares? 10 cents. So that's true right now. But is SPS worth 10 cents? Is, is six SPS worth 10 cents? Or is six SPS worth $6? You have to ask that question in a given moment. And the answer will change when time changes. And I think in years to come, my confidence is that this, this token will appreciate, therefore new eyes will come rushing to our game. Plus these resources being accumulated now will feel like there's too many of them for now. But answers like land and new player att attraction will resolve these issues. And the, you just need to, you need to hear all of that and ask yourself how, how well are those positions and those opinions justified? Do you walk away agreeing with me or do you disagree? Because there's an interesting moment right now where in a bear market, there's assets that are really inexpensive. Everything from SPS at 1.6 cents to these two cards being, you know, my total, my total deck worth $40,000 right now. That's the lowest it's been in a long, long while. So cards are lower than they've been in a long, long while. And so if you see value in this, then it's now is the time to invest the time and attention. And if you want, and if you have it, resources to acquire these so that you can begin that snowball. Because right now, you know, cards are going to be worth a penny, half a penny, two pennies. Um, and you think they'll never, that's who, like it's, it's, it's so inconsequential if I get soulbound reward cards by my time and attention because they're not, they don't have a value. But the question is, do you understand 
that they will at one point be transferable and that those sold by reward cards therefore will carry a price even though today they don't so are you willing to defer your rewards are you willing to say i'm i mean i'm i'm going to enjoy the game for its own sake while i accumulate resources in the game because i do believe it's fun i do think it has a future and i do think more player base as well as utility for the cards will grow meaning that there will be a, a, a sink for them a reduction in supply and therefore a growth in price what do you think about that let me know in the comments below guys have an amazing day god bless